I get really excited about meeting some of the biggest change makers on the planet. And Abdullah is joining us. Abdullah's got probably one of the more unique jobs because when I met him for the very first time, I took a double take at his, his name card. I looked at his business card and I go, what? What does that mean? Abdul, on your name card, it says group CEO, okay, of the post office. What does that really mean? I mean, are you really running the post office of the UAE? Yeah, my role is I'm running the whole group. And under the group of uh, uh, Emirates Post, we have uh, subsidiaries that uh, run different type of businesses. So one of them is basically Emirates Post, where we run the whole operation of the postal in, uh, administration in the country. We have another company called Wall Street Exchange, where we're an exchange house for money remittance and financial services. And then we have electronic document center, where it's a hybrid mail and printing of statements, digitizing uh, and card personalization uh, of uh, outsourcing services. You came a long way. You started this when? How many years ago? So I've joined the post since 2001. Uh, it's been a 19 years journey and uh, it's been a, a, a lot of uh, uh, and, and uh, adventurous in, in looking at how the industry could really change over time. A, a lot's changed. One big thing that's changed uh, uh, to all post offices, less people are, people are sending less mail. So that had to somehow affect your bottom line. Definitely, we've seen a huge shift, uh, Ken, within the, within the industry. And, and to be honest with you, what was working for the last 30 years is definitely not going to take us uh, in, in our future. So um, a lot of the post offices have tried to transform, trying to transform the companies, trying to transform the, the um, products that they offer, and trying to really adopt uh, technology and to digitize their experience. So you're absolutely right. Uh, the, the, the core uh, activities of business in the past was letter mail, stamps and letter mail. Uh, and we've seen that vanishing over time and, and it's gonna go absolutely to, to zero probably in the very near future. And what have raised is basically all this growth in the e-commerce and, and in, in packets and in small packets and, and, and parcels. So definitely the focus uh, for the future. And, and that's what a lot of post offices around the world is trying to identify what is the targeted business models for the future of posts. Explain the post uh, in the entity of the country. Is it fully owned by the government? Is it a partial corporation on its own that has an investor with the government? What, what's the actual layout of the post? Um, let me give you a bit of history, maybe. How, how did the whole postal industry rise? I mean, definitely uh, the posts have been there for quite a long time. And, and the governing body started uh, back in the 18th century. Uh, it's the Universal Postal Union who really uh, puts the, the rules and regulations for the postal administration globally. Uh, under the uh, Universal Postal Union, there is 192 post offices being registered. Uh, a lot of these offices are government owned, some have been privatized, uh, and, and some are uh, still owned by the government. Uh, in the United Arab Emirates, Emirates Post Group is being privatized, but still 100% owned by the government. Got it. And, and then the post office itself, has it grown uh, as big as the country has grown? Are you, have you seen big explosions in the post in your country? 100%. So we have around 100 plus post offices that covers uh, every uh, area within the country. And, and basically, we have a, a distribution and uh, line holes within the country itself. So we have door to door deliveries, and we have post offices that people could come in and be served. So I get a lot of mixed reviews when I say, Oh, yeah, my buddy, Abdullah, he's with the post office, they go, Oh, God, the post office, or someone says, Wow, they're doing some really amazing things. It's kind of like right down the line. You got people who love you, people that have a lot of issues. How do you satisfy the masses? I mean, to us, our, our ultimate uh, uh, objective is to, to be a customer-centric organization, to serve our customers to all their requirements and they need. Uh, we try to really use a lot of the, the knowledge and the skills that we gained over the years, uh, trying to automate that and digitize that and give that uh, differentiation to our customers. Now, uh, what we try to really deliver is, is uh, a better products, better services to, to our customers, and we keep enhancing these uh, requirements.
Now, uh, you wouldn't be able to have 100% control on, on the whole operation. There's a lot of human uh, factors that plays a role in this. Uh, we try to make sure that our uh, operation gets improved, uh, you know, as, as we go forward and, and using a lot of these technologies. Uh, nevertheless, the demand keep raising and, and with, with the growth of uh, the digital era, uh, I mean, uh, customers uh, demand for shipments within uh, minutes, not even hours yeah. these days. Uh, so we have to keep, uh, you know, uh, upgrading and improving on what we do. And Amazon in the States has really challenged the post office. It's, it's, it's um, really made a lot of the post office network grow up. Has services, uh, online services like Amazon gone to the UAE and created a lot of challenges? Uh, we're very proud to say Amazon is one of our customers and, and we look at them as our strategic partners. Uh, we've been delivering for Amazon for almost two years now uh, and uh, our standards and, and the quality of service uh, have tremendously improved. Uh, and uh, I don't want to speak on their behalf, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they're satisfied and happy and that's why they're keep giving us more volumes. Uh, we crossed more than a million shipment uh, last year for Amazon in the United Arab Emirates. And somebody like an Amazon has been a saving grace in some ways, too, because as you've seen people send less mail, partials and packages have gone up. So partners like Amazon are so necessary for growth, isn't it? 100%. Uh, nevertheless, we are still in the pandemic, uh, Ken. And, and what we've seen and what we realized that the post office is, is built to last. And, and it is a vital sector within the pandemic. We were uh, operational every single day within the lockdown, within the pandemic. Uh, our volumes grew more than 45% uh, uh, within, since the pandemic uh, raised. Uh, and uh, we're just keep uh, you know, improving on what we've been doing. So I notice in other uh, countries, the post office is a centralized system where it's not just mailing and picking up mail and sending mail. They use it for banking and other government services. Tell us how the post office is integrated into the, the, the UAE infrastructure. Uh, very good question, uh, Ken. So, so uh, Emirates Post at, at a very early uh, timing, I mean, more than now, uh, 15 years ago, we, we have identified that the posts have to be diverse. We need to really look at uh, other uh, revenue streams. How can we really uh, build up on the growth of the posts and how can we improve uh, our offerings and, and making sure that our customers are satisfied. So we start introducing a lot of other services. So one of the major services, for example, in the United Arab Emirates, people come and they pick their national IDs, their Emirates ID, from the branches. So we have uh, a close uh, relationship with uh, government entities. Uh, we, we offer more than 50 other products other than postal, uh, like uh, you know, getting an international driver license. Uh, these are one, some of these services, uh, paying some bills to some utility companies or telecom companies, uh, buying airline tickets uh, within the post office. So these are the offers that we, we've been uh, providing to our customers within our branches. If you look at the idea of what Starbucks has become, you know, that's conference room S, everyone goes there to hang. Have you ever thought about utilizing a post office, a facility as kind of like that meeting place where people congregate to be part of what's going on in that local community? We are trying to improve our, our retail uh, format, and there is a lot of uh, innovation that is going to come soon within our branches uh, and within our network. Uh, so we're looking at extending uh, the, the retail uh, footprint, uh, extending our pickup and delivery uh, locations, uh, and use technologies to improve these deliveries uh, by it, it's be uh, within uh, locker systems or, or other mediums within uh, the ecosystem. So in, uh, again, I'm coming from the state side and some people would say that working at the post office, um, the culture is actually not a positive culture. People feel like they've been trapped. They stay in the job because of the money, not because of the culture. But it sounds like you're quite good at building culture. How have you turned the post into a positive culture environment for your, your team, your employees? 
I mean, definitely we say uh, happy employee, happy customer, and we make sure that we really listen to our uh, employees and they're a, a major uh, asset and, and, and uh, they're the backbone of this whole organization. Um, we try to really build an innovation culture within the organization. And that's what the country, the whole government is really uh, uh, pushing the bar for that. Uh, we try to make sure that we listen to our employees to improve on what we deliver and what we achieve. I um, know some of the things you're gonna be talking about in October, and you're really looking at where the current legacy issues are and what it's gonna to take to move forward. And inside your plan, things like VR, AR, blockchain, that's all part of your future design. But before we go there, what are the biggest problems when it comes to the existing legacy issues when it comes to the post? I mean, definitely post offices have a lot of legacy systems when it comes to technologies. And to embark on this uh, great success of technology, we need to improve a lot of our uh, infrastructure when it comes to uh, IT uh, landscape. We need to make sure that we acquire a lot of uh, skills when it comes to digitization. And we need to make sure that uh, we have a, a proper harmonization within our systems. So reduce silos, uh, improve on integration, uh, um, solve uh, data issues, uh, and make sure that we have a proper uh, uh, back office systems, uh, proper uh, technologies in place that really eliminate a lot of these uh, gaps. Uh, I mean, definitely the, the, the one, one great thing would be is, is to have uh, a great uh, IT architecture in place to make sure that all the new technologies are harmonized and, and work with the proper integration to achieve a better uh, outcome uh, on, on our technology. People need to understand that um, UAE mandates all data and servers to be within the country. So you can't go off and outsource uh, AWS that's sitting in the US or in Europe. Everything has to be in the actual country. Am I correct on that? I don't think there's a, a proper rule that really limits companies doing that. Uh, I mean, definitely uh, some data have to be uh, kept within the country, especially for the sovereignty of the, of the, of the, of the uh, you know, of the data and of the country. Now, uh, definitely today, the United Arab Emirates have enough clouds built within the country itself. So uh, the likes of AWS or, or uh, Microsoft Azure or, or Oracle clouds or SAP clouds, uh, we have enough clouds within the country itself. So you could have these world-class services offered within the country. But a lot of these world-class services are so progressive and moving forward, they offer all these options. Because of those legacy issues, you can't even take advantage of those new options yet, can you? I mean, definitely, we will definitely need to look at uh, opportunities within within the horizon of this uh, technology uh, wave. Uh, we will need to evaluate what's existing and what can we really uh, uh, start building. You sound like a politician. Right now, you just sounded like a politician. You really did it. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll look, we'll evaluate. No, really, you can't because there is this whole archive, this, this antiquated system that's still there. And when you start to talk about Azure and AWS, they're pretty sophisticated in what you can do. Sure. So to go from the snail's pace, which you're not going at, you're going a little faster than that, but to get to the lightning pace, what does it take for your, your group to get to that using all blockchain, AI, um, augmented reality? What's it gonna to take to get to that level? I mean, definitely we would need to identify uh, the challenges and the gaps uh, can, that we have within our system. You sound like a politician. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying we're going to really embrace all these new technologies. But for us to go from where we are to, to implement all this, to be honest with you, we need to map it properly. Yeah, we, need, we don't need right. just to rush and start implementing things that doesn't make sense. So we need to, first of all, to have a proper strategy in place where we want to reach and what we want to achieve out of that. And, and What's the most up, important? Is blockchain important to you guys? Definitely blockchain is, is, is one of the key uh, foundation will be for the future of the technologies that we're going to have. Nevertheless, blockchain by itself is not going to resolve everything. We'll definitely need to build a lot of IoT. We will need to build a lot of automation. We will need to have AI and machine learning within uh, the systems. We will need to have a proper data structure that would help 
to really uh, integrate these systems together. So there's a lot of uh, uh, different components that would be the core of our systems that we really can build up on and can really uh, offer our customers all these new digitization uh, uh, products that need to be uh, going forward. You are in probably one of the most advanced technological countries on the planet. You really are. So when you go look at other groups that are inside your country from transportation to logistics, they are light years ahead of the rest of the world, okay? For example, the, uh, just your metro system is light years ahead of everyone, which means as you are always uh, looking at what other groups in your government are doing, who are you pointing at going, they are the perfect uh, entity inside our government that's moving in the right direction. Are you that group or is there somebody else in, in the government services that's leading the way? I mean, there are uh, pioneers and there are people who are really uh, um, advanced when they're offerings within, within uh, the country and within the government. Uh, one thing I would like to highlight that the United Arab Emirates government uh, doesn't uh, accept companies to fall behind and they're always pushing the bar. So we have TRA, who's really uh, advancing and developing a lot of the requirements when it comes to technology, and, and they have a, a minimum benchmark to really meet when it comes to your uh, online channels, to your apps, to the products that you need to offer. And the government always keep really pushing the bar year on year, making sure that everyone just starting really developing and not really fall behind. So definitely there's a lot of uh, uh, improvements happening within the system. There is a great future ahead of us to, to uh, embark on all these technologies and to develop uh, a proper system that would at least be in the level of expectation of the government uh, uh, requirements. Got it, I hear what you're saying, but your focus is to move the post to the next level. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna tackle now, what's the most important thing to tackle right now to move it to the next level? I mean, there's multiple things we're doing, Ken, here. It's not one thing that would really make us move. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are, the, the industry itself is transforming. So we need to make sure that we have that targeted operating models in place that we're focusing on as part of the strategy. We need to make sure that our people, we build the skill sets and the competencies of our people to help us to transform, to reach that objective. Uh, and, 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 and thirdly, which is a very important component, the backbone of all of this success would be technology and, and the digital era. So we need to make sure we, we embark on all these great technologies that existing, that how can we really make use of them to improve our outcomes to our customers and to give us that growth that we want to achieve. Just think back when you got involved back in 2001, how much the country has changed. Tell me about how much you have changed since you've gotten involved in the post, you as a person. Ken, you're making me look so old by me thinking back. I thought I would been here only for the last three years, but it's great, great memories. Yeah, so I joined back in 2001. I mean, at that time I just graduated from the US uh, doing a marketing and management degree uh, and joined the post straight away. The whole country definitely have really evolved and improved and grown and 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 uh, we have seen uh, all this growth over the years. So uh, the only thing was constant is change. To be honest, we were just improving and improving and improving. And we, I could see that within the post. I could see that within the ecosystem that the country in. And I could see that in myself too. I mean. I believe that I have uh, really evolved and, and improved my, my knowledge, uh, my experience that I, I got through. Um, I've done great uh, leadership programs. The last leadership program that I did was at HBS, Harvard Business School back wow. in 2018. That have given me a great uh, uh, knowledge, a lot of uh, new skill sets and competencies that I got. Uh, so we definitely keep improving ourselves. And that's- yeah, yeah. Only Gotta keep us to the cutting edge of all these uh, new uh, challenges. We have a few more minutes left. You told me that the infrastructure of the post in, in, in UAE is really good. It really is. But if you start to look at other parts of the world, like Central Africa, it's challenging. It's very challenging. If you could, let's say, speak to all the postmaster generals and postmaster CEOs around the world, what three things have you learned that really has equipped you guys to be world leaders that they need to do? What three things are important 
to create a great footprint to move forward for the other post offices. If you don't mind, Ken, I, I'll just say one thing before that, and then I'll, get, I'll come back to that question. What we have developed over the last, let's say, 20 years in, in, in the United Arab Emirates or in the in other post offices where they're advanced, post offices who were not really uh, lucky or they were not uh, successful then, they don't need to go through that journey. Today, they can uh, frog leap all of this because technology have gone so fast we don't need to start at, at square one. They could really advance and really improve what they have to offer in a very short period of time if they're really clear on what the outcome they want and how can they improve their offerings and how can they embrace and, and embark on all these new technologies. That's set, set aside. Now, what three things we I, I would recommend uh, is, first of all, to have a very clear strategy and, and, a, and a target uh, business model in place. That's, I think, the first step. You need to identify exactly what you want to offer. What is the market needs? Where is your strategy? How can you really uh, uh, make sure that to achieve your goals uh, by having a clear strategy in place? That, that's step one. Step two, to make sure that you have the right competencies and the right skill sets within the organization. Because at the end of the day, a strategy won't be developed by itself. You need people and leaders and, and eager people who really make sure that they really push the bar to achieve these results. And, and, and the third component is to make sure to have innovation culture by embracing all kinds of new technologies and, and try and error and look at how can you really keep improving what have you built over the years. Do you think that, like, if you look at Safaricom out of Kenya, they really led the way with uh, the first digital type of payment with something called M-Pesa. You're able to pay for your taxi, your phone bill, and all these things, but it became the very first cryptocurrency was M-Pesa. It was the phone company that did it. If you look at an entity like the phone company out of Kenya to really challenge the rest of the world with a new way of thinking, it's exciting to see that. Is there anything that you can say that you would basically say, we're leading the world with this. We're challenging the system with this. What would it be? So one of the things that we're trying to really push within what we're trying to do is the digital ecosystem. So we're trying to build an, an ecosystem digitally. So if, if you really look at the, in the past, people would receive their mails and, and all of their notices and, and the bills through a physical PO box. And what we're trying to really make sure that we move that physical experience and that physical uh, product to have it digitally. So you would have a, a PO box, a digital PO box, where you receive all of your communications, all of your uh, uh, invoices or, or uh, mail digitally now. And with that, you can really um, uh, archive it, you can pay your bills within that system, and you can have everything stored on that one uh, digital PO box. Imagine your medical records, imagine your important documents. So it becomes a document vault and you have Abdul, everything. Abdullah, it sounds like NFTs. It literally sounds like what an NFT is becoming. You know, you sure. have a locker and a wallet, a wallet for all your currencies and a locker for all those other things. It's very, very familiar, very similar to, to that. So you're going to have a, a box where you're going to receive all of your incoming mail or communication. The government could use it, individual could use it, and that's where you receive all of your communication. And then you have the locker where you can really save all your important documents: your birth certificate, your mm -hmm. university degrees, your uh, passports and IDs, and anything else that you feel that you need to really protect it and put it in in a, in a digital uh, vault. And, and that's hopefully would really uh, push us to, 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 to satisfy our customers and a product that they will be really willing to have. All right, last thing, just a little fun with you. Okay, I'm gonna say a couple of things. You gotta pick A or B, all right? Okay. Here we go. A, Maldives, B, Switzerland. Switzerland, B. A, Superman, B, Batman. A, Superman. <laughs> A, BMW, B, Mercedes. I'll, I'll buy, I'll get both. Can I have <laughs> all of that? Both? And last one, A, iPhone, B, Android. Actually, funny enough, you're talking about that. I have two phones here. I have an Android and iPhone. You got to, right? You got to stay in communication all the time. Abdullah, I really appreciate you sharing time with us. And we're super excited to see you on stage in October. 
because uh, where you're going is obviously a model for not just post offices around the world, but business infrastructure and culture. So it's a, just a blessing to have you, uh, have you join us. Thanks a lot. It's always great to talk to you, Ken. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you.